All right, what is up, everybody? Welcome back again to the second episode uh, of this series where we're working on turning the Segway Go Kart uh, Pro 2 into a viable drift machine. So, been gone for a couple weeks, had to go on a little road trip, but now I'm back to it. And while I was gone, I've been accumulating a nice little pile of parts here. And uh, we are going to get into today this box, which is the one that I'm hoping is the most impactful part here to get this thing going and actually sliding. Um, something very simple that is used on all drift carts, and that is our PVC sleeves. All right, so one of the main things we identified in the first episode was that the compound that is on the Segway tires is it's just, even though they call it their drift tires, it's way too soft for what you would want on, on a drift cart. Um, unless you just had massive amounts of power, you're not spinning those things. And even if you are, we identified that the wear pattern on them was awful. They chunk after only a couple of second, seconds of driving. Um, they're just not made well for actually drifting. Um, so I went on Etsy and I got these sleeves from Sparky Sleeves. They're really, really nice. Um, they, one of the reasons I went with them specifically is that normally when you would put on a drift sleeve, what you would do is you would be able to take this pneumatic tire, which this is not a pneumatic tire, and you would simply um, take out some of the air and then slip the drift sleeve over it and then refill it. Uh, but because this is not a pneumatic tire, it is exactly the size that it is and you can't make it any smaller um, to put the, the drift sleeve around. So one of the reasons I went with them is because they actually published the exact dimensions of their drift sleeve. So the this is a 10 inch drift sleeve, which is, I believe uh, it was like 9.97 inches uh, diameter which should work with our Segway tires, which I've measured, which come out to right about exactly 10 inches. Um, so I think with a little bit of hammering, we should be good to go. Um, another feature that I liked about these is if you're going to use drift sleeves on anything, but especially in this application where we can't just inflate it more to get it to stay better, um, it comes pre-installed with grip tape. So that will also help our, our case here a little bit. Um, this is not meant to be an an advertisement for them. However, advertisement, however you say. Um, however, I was really impressed when I got these out the package with kind of the beveled edge and stuff like that. They're, they're actually really nice. So I'm hoping that these work. Uh, the Segway tires are uh, 2.75 inches wide. Uh, these are actually, I believe, three inches wide. So we'll see how that works out. Um, that's one potential issue that we might run into. Um, and another reason I went with these, these are PVC. I would have probably preferred HPDE, and we'll talk about that in a second of, of why I probably would have rather have gone that route. Um, but they're very thin uh, walls, and that's something to hopefully head off the issue that we're going to have here, where there's just not a lot more space around it before you're running into other other things. So I'm hoping that I don't have to trim too much, but we're gonna find out right about now. And so removing the wheels on this, very, very simple. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take these two straps right here. So strap number one, we're gonna unstrap. And strap number two, unstrap, all right? That's going to allow us to now pick the body of the Segway up off of the uh, the S Max. And voila, now it's free. Um, this part can come off and just sit here for now. So from there, we also got to make sure we unplug this plug. Um, from the Segway and then when we put it back together, we're gonna to need to plug this one back in. The next step is we have six four millimeter Allen bolts holding this cover on. So uh, we're just gonna loosen all those, which I've I 
Allen bolts, you can just take this cover right off. And this cover is metal, um, just FYI. There's another method where people have modified this cover to try to fit um, regular go-kart wheels, which may be a route that we go if, if this doesn't work, but we'll find out. Now, once you have the cover off, these do not need to come off. This is the motor of your wheel. That's fine. You're just going to be able to slip this straight off and boom, the wheel is now removed. Now, thankfully, the Segway wheel also has kind of a little bit of a beveled edge. So it allowed me to sit this on there um, and kind of get it centered fairly easily. What we're gonna use, and we'll see if it works. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, but it's just a sledgehammer, a two by four, and probably a lot of wax. We'll see how this goes. Obviously, my original thought process did not work. Um, so I think that the next step is going to be to heat up the PVC pipe so that we can get it to be a little bit more flexible. And hopefully that'll give us enough flex to get it around. Because essentially, once we can get it started, um, they're basically the exact same diameter across. Um, so it should fit, but getting it on there is, is going to be interesting. I ended up not having to heat it and I was able to get it started. Um, I'll show you on the other wheel when I do it, but essentially all I did was I took the tire, I set it on top, I, I took my hand on the back side of the PVC and I pried the PVC open while I wedged the tire and squished it down until I got it all the way around. So now we're going to hammer it in and get this thing all, all the way on there. on there I might should have done it the other way all right it's on there let's get the other one all right so we've run into our first issue which I didn't think this was gonna be quite as straightforward as just slipping a sleeve on there uh, the first issue is because this is compressing the tire just a little bit now when you go to put that wheel back on it doesn't actually quite sit flush in the little spaces that it normally would would sit in. And so it's not gonna just slide back on there. So we're gonna have to whack this thing on there. Um, the unfortunate part of that though, is means I, you know, I wanted this to be a solution that I could easily take on and off to uh, be able to put regular wheels on there for when my daughters wanted to drive it. Um, right now, that doesn't look like that's what it's going to be. Um, Cause more than likely I'm going to have to either pry this off or cut the or cut the PVC off and then be able to pull the wheel off uh, when it comes time to remove this wheel so um, just brainstorming out loud right now more than likely what I'll do is try to find a PVC pipe that is cut slightly wider or I may um, next time take the wheel that's on the inside and maybe sand it down or wear it down just a little bit more like literally a millimeter or two will probably be enough to then give me enough clearance that this isn't going to have to squeeze it as much and then i can easily put it put it on and off one more note on that for hammering purposes um, right now i don't have an ideal setup it is what it is but what i would recommend is to get something that you can lay across here um, whether it's you know wood or or a piece of metal pipe or something like that to help you to to hammer it on their flush um, and hopefully it won't move quite as much. So if you do need that, the measurement from here to here is seven inches. All right, so the wheel is on there and it spins without interference. So that's a good sign so far. Um, one, the way I ended up doing it, I basically hammered down on the wheel until I got pretty close. And then I went ahead and installed the cover and put the screws in and then used the screws in a star pattern um, to kind of draw the, the wheel the rest of the way on. Um, one kind of warning though, if you're going to do that, these are, these are really small screws and I, I don't think they're super high grade screws either. So, um, so if you're doing that method and you're running into a lot of resistance, don't crank on them because you're going to just break the bolts or, or strip the, um, or strip, strip, strip the threads. So 
um, just be aware of that as you go. I kind of just went until I felt a little bit of resistance and then I moved on to the next one and it, it seemed to do a pretty good job. But the wheel is on there now flush and it's spinning true. So we're gonna move on to the other side. All right, for wheel number two, I'm gonna show you the process that I did to get the other one on there. So what I did was I took the PVC and put it on the bottom and then, um, we'll set it this way. All right, so essentially all I'm doing is I'm squeezing this wheel in. So it's, we're gonna start out with it kind of like a tire changer where we're gonna wedge it in there a little bit. And then I'm gonna go on one of the sides that it's not, not wedged in and I'm pushing out on the PVC as I push in on the tire. And then we're gonna go around the wheel, just getting a little bit in at a time. So we'll push out on the PVC squeeze it on the tire all right finally have it on there i am in a full sweat in my work clothes and need to go back to work so this is not ideal what i had to do was i just took out the sander and i just basically sanded the uh the stock wheel down a few more millimeters to get this one to fit um, the other one went in a lot easier than this one this did not go in easy um, so i'm predicting that this is going to be really hard to put back on the hub but we'll find out right now the other one was tough to get on here, um, but this one is downright. I'm not sure I'll even be able to do it. Um, basically, you can see as soon as I clear any lip on, on one side, it's so smashed in that it won't even line up to the other holes. So people from Segway, if you're watching this, could you please, please, please just give us a pneumatic rear tire for, uh, for these go-karts? That would be like amazing. I'd be happy to pay extra for them. But goodness gracious, this process stinks. Um, so what I'm gonna have to now do is hammer it back out, which should be not fun at all, and then shave off some more and then give it a second try. Okay, so I finally have this thing about ready to go on here. So I wanna just show you what I had to do. This one, for whatever reason, was much tighter and I was having no success. So um, this, this little hump runs through all the way to the opposite side. So what I had to do was just grind off a little bit of material on the back side uh, to get it started. And then I had to grind off more of the tire to get it to seat without being quite so compressed. So um, I'm gonna squish this on there and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, so we have them back on there. So a um, couple notes. The first issue is that the handbrake makes constant contact uh, with the sleeve, which for me, I'm actually planning to delete this handbrake anyway. Um, so I'll probably end up just sawing that off and then that should solve that issue. Um, the second issue with it, goodness gracious, I tore these things up. Second issue is, is the fact that, um, yeah, they were so hard to get onto the, that motor that I'm probably gonna have to saw them off uh, when the time comes. But the good thing is it does in fact slide a little bit. So uh, we'll show you that right quick and So it does drift. Um, the next step though is gonna be to shave off or remove uh, those handbrake plates because those are right now currently just constant contact. I think that it'll, it'll do a pretty decent job um, once those are removed and it's not dragging all the time. Uh, definitely could feel that it would be nice to have more angle. It spins out very easily, uh, especially on transitions. You, you just don't have a lot of angle to be able to draw from. So that's where the battle arrow kit will come in and it'll be be really nice. Um, it is nice though that you can use either race mode or there's also manual mode, which I found that uh, first gear and second gear were both usable. Uh, third gear, it started to bog down too much to be able to spin the, top, spin the wheels. Um, so some good progress. You're gonna definitely have to figure out some different things with the drift sleeves to make them work better. Um, oh yeah, another thing I wanted to touch on, PVC versus HPDE. So 
The uh, PVC is gonna be a little bit grippier and that's what I have on there right now. Um, I thought that I would need the HPDE because it uh, doesn't have as much power as, as some other uh, drift carts, but it seemed like the PVC actually would might be a happy medium for me. I, I like my cars gripped up anyway, so um, so that was, a, that was a pretty nice feeling. Um, and then the other thing to, to take note of is right now these are three inch wide uh, PVC, PVC sleeves. So one thing that goes backwards from how a car works is actually the wider the sleeve, the slipperier it is, and the skinnier the sleeve, um, the more grip you'll, you'll have. So there are some ways to modulate grip and um, by using different size sleeves, different size wheels, and different compounds. Um, so that'll be something that I play with, especially once I get this cart to where I can go drive with other carts. So that's today's episode. Next episode, we will uh, work on the handbrake and we'll probably go ahead and in install the battle arrow kit as well and then take this thing for another whip and we should be starting to get to the point where it's getting pretty fun. Hope you've enjoyed and hope it was helpful. Um, if there's any questions that you have or requests along the way, please feel free to let me know. But in the meantime, like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.